Here we are again. Guess what it is? It's episode eight. Pop culture petri dish. It's where science fiction and science fact connect and the in between, I guess, you know, like how they influence each other and such. That's what this podcast is about. I'm Abe Epperson. I'm one of the hosts. And with me is my other host, Christian Ramirez. Welcome. Hello. What are we talking about today? Today, we are going to talk about time travel. Ooh. Yeah. And this is one where we're going to, obviously, we're going to have to rely more on the pop culture part of pop culture. Yeah. The science dish. fiction. Of yeah. It. Yeah. Because last we I don't. Checked. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Not really doing big in that regard. In fact, didn't uh, you were telling me earlier about Stephen Hawking held a party? Yes. Tell me that story. Basically, Stephen Hawking was <laughs> the way that he thought of disproving reverse time travel, backwards time travel, was that he would have a party for time travelers and invite all the time travelers <laughs> after in, the party after happened. After the party happened, yeah, and, and nobody showed up because who wants to go to that fucking party? <laughs> I, I, here's what I want to know: is if whether or not like Stephen Hawking and that whole like residence, like where it was happening. Yeah. Did they like actually think like, was it just a goof for social media <laughs> or was, did they actually like, but on the offhand chance, yeah, like maybe we should like out. put out a cheese plate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because like they, they had to think in the back of their mind. Right. He had to think it kind of is possible. Uh, and I'm, you know, time makes fools of us all. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta say that if, uh, I gotta be prepared because like if someone knocks on the door and is like, guess what, buddy, you were right. And he's like, oh shit. <laughs> and if he's not prepared, that's just, yeah, that's just being a poor host. That's just being a bad host. Yeah. I mean, you throw a party, you throw a party. Yeah, exactly. You know, no one shows up to the party. That's on you. <laughs> just or time Steve, travel in this yeah, case. But just like, Stephen Hawking sitting there by himself. <laughs> just sadly eating a cheese plate. <laughs> R.I.P. Stevie. You you were the best of us, even though that was a really silly thing that you did. Yeah, but no, it's, I mean, it's a thought experiment. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. The end of no, the it's. I'm glad that he did it because, of course, it raises awareness to science and it makes us more curious. Yeah, and, that's, and it's cute and clever, yeah. and so it makes people who wouldn't think about science normally. I'm exactly. looking at you, Dan O'Brien, who would be <laughs> like, "Oh, jokes! Science has jokes." Yeah, motherfucker, science has jokes. <laughs> science isn't. <laughs> I just get real angry because every time I bring up climate change to him, like with I'm talking with Cody and yeah. he like walks in and he just goes like, oh, are you guys talking about science? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, I will not let you have that. You, you, you get to do that. I don't have control over you. But in this podcast, in the small arm of influence that i have <laughs> shame daniel shame uh but that's all i need to say on that uh so what do we want to talk about first uh oh wait uh we talked about something outside which is yeah. that uh we want to talk talk about there's two distinction there's a distinction we want to make uh between time travel which is there's like something that I guess we're going to call natural time travel, yeah. which we'll talk about probably first, which is like time dilation and wormholes and yeah. like what physically might naturally exist and yeah. what we know about Stuff it. Stuff that we like know spooky, exists. Spooky yeah. physics. And then there's uh, the science fiction uh, part. Not that the first one wasn't that, but like the more science fiction stuff, which is uh, I guess what we'll call like man-made or unnatural Right. Um, time travel, which is like your back to the futures and loopers. Right. You know, so um, what do you want to dive into first? Well, yeah, I think first natural time travel natural. is is probably a good starting point because we know it exists. We basically GPS on our phones is dependent upon that being a reality to get us in to get our positioning as correct as it does. 
because um, basically the the GPS has to take into account the fact that the satellites and stuff like that are moving at a much higher speed and that that a certain amount of time travel exists. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to get within 100 meters or 200 meters of our actual position because people traveling through space and who are not as bound to gravity as we are and they already exist at a different rate of time than we do. So it would have to be gravity oriented or at least have some kind of GPS system because otherwise, because we are, even if you move back like a year, right? you are physically in terms of space time in a completely different space because we are spinning around at like 10,000 miles an hour yeah. and we're screaming in a space to use a <laughs> reference from another podcast of this, uh, another episode of this podcast, screaming into space like 60,000 yeah. 60, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. I don't, I, I'm not a science guy. Um, <laughs> but that means we're physically in a different like quadrant of space. Mm -hmm. So if we were to bleep out of existence somehow, using some kind of natural right phenomena like a wormhole maybe right uh what's keeping us from just like when we explode out like so there's a black hole and assumably in a different universe there's a white hole where things <laughs> are just coming out no, um but um the that when we would reapparate to use a fi science fiction term or a fantasy term uh <laughs> god uh <laughs> it would mean that we were like phys we would just explode into space yeah and we wouldn't even be we wouldn't be even if i wanted to go back one second right i would appear we've like moved so much over there mm. so there has to be some like orientation system right a gps for space time yeah exactly which just sounds a awesome b there, there's too many <laughs> yeah like i don't there's too much trig involved in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that I think people don't understand the massive speeds that we move at as we're just moving through the universe and also the massive distances that there are between us and the sun and us and other planets and stuff like that. It's, it's something because we're people and we talked about this on the last episode, the concept of middle earth, um, mm. not J.R.R. Tolkien, middle earth, but mm. the, uh, who was it that came up with Dawkins? Yeah. Dawkins talking about middle earth that we exist in this space where people can understand and interact with things that are relative to our size, that we're at a good size yeah. for interacting with economies all sorts of, of scale. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. We don't have, we can't conceptualize the massive speeds and the massive distances that there are in space mm -hmm. that we actually have to deal with. Like it's not something, cause how do you, how do you explain to somebody that, the all the grains of sand on all the beaches in the world are not like th all of those put together then the sheer numbers of that are nothing compared to all of the the air particles that you're inhaling and exhaling and stuff like that there's we don't understand sizes because we are so based on human size mm -hmm. that we don't understand millions of miles hundreds of millions of miles and things like that mm -hmm. it's just foreign to us it's mm -hmm. like if you try to ask somebody to imagine what infinity is you know we can't like over there we can like yeah. <laughs> we can think of infinity we can't right. understand infinity like how far is infinity it's infinite okay yeah. so like down the block but how many more yeah well <laughs> infinite still okay but how many yeah okay so like <laughs> So take the thing that I said in times of by like the biggest number I can think of, like Googleplex, and they're like, how much bigger than that? And it's like, still infinite. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just a bunch of dummies. And yeah. uh, you, you, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> uh, you, we're just a bunch of dummies. Uh, so, okay, so natural time travel. So we got wormholes, which are different from black holes. Yeah. But wormholes are uh, Eisenstein-Rosen bridge, yeah, yeah, which is this 
theoretical thing that actually has merit. Like we haven't seen one and, yeah. like a wormhole, but we've seen. The, have we seen them in space? I don't think that they, it's ever been confirmed to be seen in space. At this point, they're all completely but, theoretical. But the math works. I think so, is how. It, but it's a gravity well, right? Right. Which is a black hole. Right. We have seen that. We have so seen all were so the difference between a black hole and a uh, wormhole <laughs> is just the shitty names that we give things. Um, <laughs> is that they it connects to some place else. Yeah. The That's wormhole the theoretical difference in its definition. Yeah, it we talked seemed. about um, the Alcubier warp fields and stuff like mm-hmm. that when we talked about spaceships. Yeah, and wormholes are kind of they're they're in the sense that they are bending space and mm-hmm. time that mm-hmm. they are bending the rea- the fabric of space time. Yeah. to get from one place to another. That's the s- similar kind of idea, mm-hmm. but. Um, and black holes, of course, warp space and time around them because they are so massive that when you apply that much gravity to something that not even light can escape it, mm-hmm. then it is going to warp space time around it. So what I, what I want to know is like how many years are we away from, you know, getting a Stargate? <laughs> Do you know that answer? No, obviously not. Uh, so, okay. So, so how does time dilation work in these instances where you are liter- to use a term used by physicists spaghettified right when you go into uh, a gravity well right where literally your atoms uh, separate and then the assumption of time travel in this wormhole instance yeah. would be that you are reorganized uh, kind of like in next generation star trek terms you know like a teleporter sure like you're reorganized into your uh you are you again right um elsewhere and in time and where right or when where i don't know (laughs) what the term would be for that um so if that's the case uh like how 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 would that work time dilation wise like so you would because uh, from what i hear that there is a moment that if you're hypothetically going into a black hole right where like and interstellar the movie by chris nolan uh talked about this about how they got closer to the black hole gargantua one yeah and they lost even though they only spent like a couple hours. I think they spent three like, hours. Yeah, total. or something like that. And then 20 years on Passes. Earth. Yeah. So really what we're talking about here is that if natural time travel would be just being paused in the great scheme of things yeah. or being sped up in the right. great scheme of things, right? Yeah. The way that I understand it, and I could be wrong. Somebody correct me if you want to. Whatever. This is a comedy podcast. But... <laughs> <laughs> But the way I am, it's a science podcast too, but we're here to have fun. I'm the jokes one. (laughs) You're the, the, the facts one. The way that I understand it, the fact that the, that light speed is a universal speed limit. Basically, if we travel at rates that are close to the speed of light, that means the way that you, the person traveling at those speeds perceives time slows down. So our perception of time wouldn't change for people that are that are inside the spaceship or on the planet like mm. an interstellar if time seems to pass normally mm. but because they are moving at such a high factor of the speed of light and because of the gravity anybody outside of that like the guy that's that they leave on the ship is experiencing time slowly slowly yeah. relative to the way that they're experiencing but just the rest of the world as well like right. All the people that matter, not right. saying that because there's atoms f- forging ahead into a black hole right now that are perceiving, quote unquote, yeah. time slowly, constantly. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a hydrogen atom out there that has been in the same more or less time sphere right. than I have. As it's crossing the event horizon. Than of, the entire yeah. Earth 
took to form. Yeah, exactly. More or less. Well, may, maybe not that because that's like four and a half billion years. Sure. But like, yeah. But like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's why in Interstellar, the distress signal that they, that they, were, ca- that they were getting from that planet, the water planet, um, what was happening was they thought they were getting constant updates from, from the signal. Right. But what was happening is that it was stuck in a time yeah, loop. Basically. I think Anna Hathaway says like, she may have just landed like 20 minutes ago. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's been 10 years for them. Exactly. Um, so it, it, yeah. So that is insane. Uh, <laughs> and that sounds like it's, beyond the scope of our recognition, right. like as middle earthians, like, I don't think that, uh, maybe we have the intellectual capacity to think it up right? and maybe in the future we have the ability to think it up in a practical way and yeah. make something that uses an Einstein Rosen right. But it sounds like that, uh, anyone who's going in and out of these things, are basically saying farewell to the rest of humanity. Yeah. And that's uh, one of the things that interstellar captures really well is Matthew McConaughey and the fact that his daughter just grows up while he's gone because, because they experience time at a different rate. And by the time he gets back after he goes into the black spoilers for interstellar, after he goes into the black hole at the end, She's old. She's much older than him because he's been experiencing time at such a slow pace because he's been so close to the speed of light for so long. Yeah. Kind of how I feel about watching the film. It just takes so long. <laughs> now, just uh, that's a joke about its duration, but uh, I actually really like that film. And I do too. I... On the Crack Movie podcast we watched it with alex schmitty yeah and he and i both share that that's one of our favorite christopher nolan uh pictures yeah yeah Uh, it's a very it's very smart and it's yeah perhaps one of the only at least filmic representation of like a very good version of natural time travel yeah of and physics uh, and they relativity. actually have um and i mentioned in the, on that podcast but if you haven't listened to it i'll mention it here again uh they actually got uh, a very smart man who's yeah. a physicist kip thorne to uh be a part of that production yeah to consult on and it. to consult on it and um he has a few books uh and i suggest uh Black Holes and Time Warps is the name of the book. Um, it's a very good book. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, apparently, they put his, like, th- his math, his, yeah. you know, like the stuff that he knew. Yeah, that's, that's that what's on the board. That he didn't necessarily write yeah. all of, but he just was like, this is the repository of what we know about this kind of spooky <laughs> yeah. kind of time dilation stuff. And they put it into a computer in order to render, you know, like the idea that a black hole, if you were in this distance from it, from Gargantua, would look, yeah. yeah, it would a be a sphere, not a circle, but mm-hmm. be like there would be rainbows because light would literally yeah. be prisming itself uh, as far as your perception would be. Yeah, and uh, they put it in a computer, and when he got the results from the computer, he was like. Well, now I need to write a new paper because you, you realize that with this movie, the research that I, I told you, and then you took all this money and spit it out of this very effective computer. Yeah. Now we have new thoughts on <laughs> black holes. Yeah, that's and so it, cool. That's just a cool thing. Yeah. Where it's, it's like it's James Cameron. It's like right. I'm gonna make a Titanic, and then I'm gonna go to the deepest place <laughs> in yeah. the sea. Uh, why? Because of Titanic money. <laughs> and they're like, well, while you're there, do you mind doing some science? He's like, yes, I'll do all the science. <laughs> uh, and so like, it's just a weird thing that polymaths do sometimes yeah, yeah. is that they, uh, they'll, they'll be a filmmaker, make a bunch of money and then advance science, advance science somehow. <laughs> and that's just a weird fucking world. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. And yeah, I like, interstellar well this is not an interstellar podcast but (laughs) but i was (laughs) i like all the science in it um some of the stuff that like love is the thing that's missing like that's the thing that connects us yeah (laughs) 
that was I rolled my eyes at that because yeah, the science was so. We don't need to talk about it. We're still. <laughs> it's fine. It was just a, a no, means but it was to a good movie. End. It's a good. It was a means to an end, but um. But the science definitely look at the science of relativity pretty, and stuff in it's, that. It's science positive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are movies though that we want to get into, like your Terminators and your uh, Back to the Futures, yeah. your Loopers. That are um, more science fiction than science fact, but yeah. it, so they're fantasy in that regard. But yeah. uh, they also have some interesting notions in terms of how it works. What would you say right. your favorite like synthetic time travel movie would be? Ooh, like who tough. does it the best? Were it to be a machine, like like a machine or like not a natural occurrence, like right. a, like we were talking about the fly and the teleportation. Right. Like there's one machine and it takes you to another machine. Right. But now you're in the past or in the future. Yeah. I, I like the, okay. I don't love the movie looper, but the concept of you can only send people back to the time to X amount of time back. You can't send people back like a hundred years or however many hundreds of years. I do like that. Because we were talking about outside, there's the theory that you could take something like a wormhole, take one of the ends to exist near a black hole or somewhere else where it's where it's where relativity is having an effect on it and it's aging more slowly. And then in effect, you would be able to use that wormhole to travel back to basically when that wormhole was created and still be able to go back like 100 years or 50 years or whatever it was. Mm. And so I like that concept. Um, I mean, Terminator is the coolest one. That's I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what what I like because I actually rewatched uh, Terminator and Terminator Two recently. Yeah. And uh, what I really liked about it is that when T uh, two when uh, Arnold comes, like in so in like the first five minutes. Yeah. They show clearly that like it's a sphere of some kind mm-hmm. uh, of warping because like he like appear he appears in an area where like the ground has like, there's a little dip in the ground yeah, and like the truck, the semi truck that he's there, it just like gets rid of the metal. Yeah. yeah. Like it just, uh, and it's just a perfect like laser rendering of it. And, um, it's just real stupid that you have to wrap things in <laughs> human flesh because you don't have to uh, wrap a T 1000 in flesh. Yeah. Also that, <laughs> I guess they, they, I don't know, but, uh, that liquid that, metal is that's like, that's all just, you know, you just, you just don't think about it. What is hyperspace? Just don't think about it. Just assume it works. <laughs> Yo, what's a replicator? It's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Where are the atoms coming from? Don't worry about it, buddy. Uh, because that's what you have to do with science fiction. Yeah, of course. Um, sometimes that's, that's necessary. I really like Futurama. Yeah. Futurama. Yes. There's and especially in Bender's big score, because I love the idea of uh, like real rudimentary time travel mm-hmm. occurring and using androids. Yeah. yeah. Um, because there's this, so it happens in Bender's big score um, where Bender just is like, well, I'll just chill for like, a, and I'll re meet my friends in a few centuries. Yeah. Cause I'm an Android and can do, or I'm a robot and can do that. And right. that, uh, I'm sure there's other short stories that brought this up, but it's also a famous, I think it's called time zero or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a famous, uh, next generation episode where data gets like beheaded. Yeah. Uh, in like, like he's, he, he's just like running around with Samuel Clemens, like, and like, so he got, transported in the past yeah but then in order to reunite uh they just piece them together and they're like hey we're so like what's what's been going on with you data he was like no i saw you like two hours ago i just turned off for a few centuries (laughs) and they're like yeah yeah we just saw you like 20 minutes ago so like we cool (laughs) you know (laughs) and um that's a crazy notion because he learned all the information of the past. Right. There's another episode where there's a time traveler in uh, next generation where he comes back and just witnesses an event. Um, I forget which 
episode that is someone will probably point it out in comments but like uh he just he's like there's this big event happening uh and picard and the enterprise <laughs> you're like i just i'm just here i'm, I'm not going to influence anything i can't tell you anything about anything yeah uh, I'm just going to watch because this is just like a museum for me. Mm -hmm. And that terrifies me. <laughs> uh, that notion of like, so that's the Stephen Hawking version. Is yeah, exactly. that like time travelers have been here for a long time. They're all around us. Uh, and they just are hiding <laughs> because they're just like, it complicates things when you know that I'm a time traveler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the other thing is uh let's talk about devices. Yeah. I forget who mentioned it and I think it might also have been Hawking which said that in order if we were to create like an artificial form of time travel you'd need to have like a projection and a receiver. Mm -hmm. Like a you need to have like two pods or right. something like that. So the moment that time travel were to be invented, uh, the farthest back we can go is that moment. Right. We can't go back to any previous moments because right. there's no receiver. Yeah. Uh, now t Terminator gets rid of that by just saying that you, you just have like a, you just, just shooting them back, just shooting them back. It's a time fine. cannon. One way, basically. one way yeah, exactly. street. Um, and there's other solves, uh, the DeLorean and back yeah. to the future just has the flux, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it, it just, it follows the car. Um, but it, that's an interesting notion to me as well. I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on like, if, do you think that it doesn't make a better science fiction movie if they explain that like in primer or like there's a receiver there's one device that makes it work because that kind of works like wormhole right you know there's an in and an out yeah yeah i i think for a hard science fiction movie that would make it more interesting is that if they want to try to ground it in reality that this is when time travel was invented so this is the first time that you can go back to so i do think for a hard science fiction it's interesting but if you're making an action movie it doesn't matter yeah, like it, it's no, Terminator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the device. Hermione's little fucking the time necklace. Turner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and so personally, I, I mean, personally, I'm into the idea. <clears throat> I'm into exploring ideas about time travel, which is one thing um, that I really liked about the movie Arrival. Is that spoilers for Arrival? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once Amy Adams is able to read the alien language which doesn't have which you just perceive all at once there's no time structure to it right then she can perceive her entire life and take it in as a whole and you realize that the opening sequence is actually later in her life than when you for exactly like, you don't actually meet in your duration you don't meet her until like 20 minutes in right and i think that's there's there's some flaws in the actual movie, but I think that part of um, just the way that our brains work and the introducing that concept specifically, it is it is time travel. It's not exactly time travel, but it's being able to perceive your entire life at one time all at once is in effect time travel because that's how she solves the problems. Right. That's how she gets the Chinese government to back down and like that's how she averts a uh, military crisis with the um, heptapods. Yeah, yeah. The heptapods. Yeah. And so, um, and that's why they came to earth in the first place is because they, they knew that she had in, the capacity to right, understand. And they understood because they lived for a super long time that one day in a thousand years that the humans are going to help the heptapods with a crisis of their own. Yeah. And so that's why they had to introduce the language so to them. They're unstuck in time. Right. Uh, to, yeah. Uh, that <clears throat> the idea of seeing time as dimension love is the fifth dimension. <laughs> uh, the idea of <laughs> seeing time as the 4d plane. Right. Uh, is very compelling to me. 
just because everything that we've learned about science, and it's something I think Einstein said when he talked about like the bicycle or the car. He was like, yeah, so a scientist's job is to perceive your perception is what you're fighting against. Right. And to truly be a scientist and be observation based and make observational, you know, insight is to perceive it outside of oneself Mm -hmm. outside. Like if you, especially if you're looking at society's maneuvers and thinking like an alien, you got to think like an alien, half Mm -hmm. of us upside down. We're all, traveling around a big ball of gas uh it's it's all <laughs> using dinosaur bones stupid, to... <laughs> insane uh but like like isn't that like way more crazy than like we live on the back of a turtle <laughs> you know or these other mythos that we make this right. is all quotes from richard Feynman. but yeah. uh anyway so just the idea that we have to like so if if you just how do you understand 3D? Well, just think about 2D and then think about like the meta of right. that. So think about X and Y. And then Z. And then Z is where you're looking at X and Y. And then now conceive of Z. And so time would be not just... So X, Y, Z, three dimensions, that's space. Yeah. Time would be this thing uh, where we would be... Con- we can perfectly conceive of space through all time. Right. So you would have to be a fifth dimensional animal or what entity. Yeah. Uh, in order to see things truly in 4d, yeah. which is what Amy Adams is, I guess now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what Matthew McConaughey does in the black hole. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Because that's like kind of what we have to deal with is that we live in a 4d world and mm-hmm. we were like, what? but like you can also think of 3d and you can think of 2d and you can think of 1d. So someone out there is 5d thinking, looking at us. It's, it's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. It's a possibility. And that might be a really easy way for, uh, you know, to expand through the universe Mm -hmm. is just if time wasn't a problem, not a, you know, problematic resource like we have. It's a really interesting concept, too, because it completely alters the way that you would if if you take that as being something that's true, then it completely changes the way that we would conceive of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And it would it would be it would completely the change the way that we think of free will too because if you can conceive if you can perceive your entire life at once and you're living all of it at the same time then what free will are you actually exercising or are you just something that's being acted upon by outside forces we don't know well i definitely know there would be a time war <laughs> like almost immediately they'd be like all right, time travel is invented. And then, like, I come back from, like, I walk in and I have an eye patch. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, you must die. And I'm like, what? What is happening? And he's like, you, do you not understand? You are president of the future. And I'm like, me? I can barely tie my shoes. And he's like, I know, you're the worst one of us. Because, like, what if you, if time, if time travel or, like, parallel parallel dimensions work and if one of the versions of you came and told you you're the worst version of us that would just fuck <laughs> fuck me over i'm like wait so my the timeline i'm in is is i'm the worst version of all of the possible abes god damn it i knew it uh, you know what i knew it i kind of knew it I thought about it. There's some stuff I did in college I'm not real proud about. He's like, it wasn't even the college stuff. It's literally right now. The stuff you're doing right now. You're doing a podcast, you piece of shit. I think about this all the time. I think about uh, the existentialism of uh, my uh, other selves. Your alternate selves. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Of course, we're all going to worry about that. But in the... but he, guess what the good news is? Yeah. It doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the does. only me and then when that it I does, need to worry. Then we can worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> you only have one life to live, people. Yeah. So live them like you only have one life to live. <laughs> um, what else do you want to talk about? Anything? I don't know. That's. I think that's a pretty good roundup of all the time travel that we get to see. And I mean... Um, Any movies you want to shout out or short f- films or novels or... 
I mean, yeah, those. specifically, I I really liked. I only saw Arrival this year, and I really liked it. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's mostly just the philosophical questions that come up when, if you can perceive all of your life at one time, uh, just that concept is really interesting to me. And obviously, Interstellar, the science in it's really great. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when it comes to relativity and stuff like that. Like you said, it, inv- it advanced science. So yeah. support it if yeah, you yeah, like yeah. science. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, Star Trek has some good things to say. Uh, as one of my teachers told me, uh, take two Harlan Ellison's and call me in the morning, <laughs> which I think he was talking about like, Oh, you think, you know, science fiction? Well, there's this guy and you think, Oh, you read hitchhiker's guide. You think you're, you know, God's gift? No, just read some Harlan Ellison shorts. Um, Yeah. uh, So as far as I can do, people read Harlan Ellison. uh, Watch Looper. Watch uh, uh, Star Trek TNG, the entirety of it. uh, Just because, I mean, like, why are we here? Uh, Yeah. There's There's uh, several other movies that are good. And uh, I encourage anyone in the comments to bring up a better like what the i would ask this question to the universe yeah. what's the best time travel mechanism uh narrative wise yeah uh because i brought up futurama i think that one's pretty damn good yeah future back to the future's pretty airtight yeah um as far as magical yeah you know you just accept time travel works it is magic Il- interstellar is like playing by the rules of the world so yeah. that it's not exciting, but it's, you know, it's, yeah. it, it, it's a fair assessment of that strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, see if there's any other ones. Anything else you want to do? No, I think I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Not. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to talk about like about time or time traveler's <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are garbage movies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for joining in, and we'll be back in two weeks. Butterfly effect. Yeah, that's all we'll put in your head. Butterfly effect, do it as a verb. Butterfly effect me. (laughs) Yeah. On Twitter. Yeah. Butterfly (laughs) effect me on Twitter. And uh, if uh, Future Abe is, or uh, Parallel Dimension Abe is listening to this, I'm sorry for whatever I did, and I hope you don't (laughs) murder me in my sleep. Uh, thank you everyone and I hope I wish upon you that you don't have a time traveler c- coming at you and killing you that is also yourself with an yeah, iPad I hope you don't looper yourself <laughs> yeah just please don't just don't looper me man just, <laughs> just don't looper me alright thanks bye This has been a Small Beans Endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!